All right, hello and welcome to the Rhode Island Wave Spotlight interview series. My name is Dina and I am your host for tonight, filling in for Scott Nerney. Uh, we are at the beautiful Coesid Inn in West Warwick, Rhode Island, uh, a wonderful place. If you want to come and have a holiday dinner here, this is the place to be. I can't think of anything on the menu that I would not recommend. And if you like what you hear here, please hit, click, like, and subscribe so you can catch more of our Spotlight videos. Today we have a very special guest, uh, Michael English. He's been here before um, with, with a friend uh, talking about a um, nonprofit that he's been involved with. But today we're going to talk about something a little different. So before we get started, Michael, let us tell us a little bit about yourself. So I was helping Vito with his nonprofit organization. So I got hurt at work and haven't been uh, able to work since. It's very hard for me to, to concentrate, work or anything else um, or write just about. But at the same time, I have uh, an MBA. I also have uh, a paralegal certificate and I also um, have a doctor of ministry. I know my community very well, and, and at this moment, I think our public officials and our law enforcement are, are kind of falling shy. Um, so therefore, because of my kids and because of my community, I thought with my experience and my education, um, I should voice at least the most dangerous things at the moment, even though I can't really work and can't do much. I think there's a couple of things that I need to outline that the state is falling shy of. And our children need someone to stand up. And at this moment, I think it's, it's going to be me. And I'm hoping someone carries the, the torch because at the same time, I'm not able to, to fully run down the street with it. But I can at least guide them in the right direction of what majorly is killing our children. And we're, we're not looking at it right. like we should. So Rhode Island has this uh, program that they're calling har harm reduction and somehow they're going to help people do drugs safely. And um, we've talked about this before, and I, neither of us uh, agree with that. But you stumbled on something that was really, uh, really upsetting. Yes. Um, maybe we'll, we'll hold off on that a little bit. I, I don't know if people know about me. Uh, I actually was a recovery coach for a minute. Um, and one of the reasons I stopped doing it was because when I got into it, I thought we were going to help people uh, get introduced to the recovery community, people who were coming out of um, rehab, and we were going to introduce them to the recovery community. But instead, what happened was uh, insurance became, uh, you know, being an addict became something that was insur insurance would pay for, and all of a sudden, we weren't re introducing them to the recovery community, we were introducing them to other uh, facilities and places that would get paid. Um, and uh, and I, I was, you know, that was, I remember that was when they first started handing out Narcan uh, as something, a way of, I'm not, I'm not really sure what they were trying to do with that. I'm still not sure what they were trying to do with that, but it's really going on overdrive. Mm -hmm. uh, so tell us about what happened when you discovered this. Uh, well, to, to back it up a little. So the problem with, with not only Rhode Island, but the United States, a lot of this came from the federal government with the harm reduction. It's almost basically saying we, we can't stop it, so we're going to join them. We're going to say that there's a safer way to do drugs. Is You, you, you can go to these safe havens and, and, and do all these totally absurd things that we would say even addicts. I mean, I'm an addict in my past, and even... In my worst addiction, I know what was bad for me. Now they're saying that you can do drugs safely. It's just not something we should teach our children at any level. We got to try to save them. We're not going to save them all. But to sit there and say there's a safer way to do drugs, it's almost like saying we're not going to save any of them. Right. And we need to put a stop to this. We need, we need real leadership, both in the state and in the federal government, at least on the, on the addiction part, and at least how to address it. Again, I've said this in many locations, the state of Rhode Island has a, 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 a peanut um, zone, meaning you can't go with peanut butter into any school district. But another kid can hand another kid a pill and say, this will get rid of your headache or your back pain or whatever. And that's all okay because it's not peanut butter. To me, if peanut butter is that dangerous, 
a pill is even worse, considering one pill can kill My. with fentanyl in it. And we're just, we're just not looking at it the way we should. And we're not addressing it as adults. We're addressing it like we're, we're part of the problem, not the solution. And I have worse words than that, but I just figured I'd clean it up for the team. I will in the, in the states, not in their defense, but today for the very first time, I heard a commercial from the state of Rhode Island uh, talking about how the uh, drug supply was tainted and that people should not take any drugs outside of something prescribed from a pharmacy because the drug supply was tainted. And I think maybe somebody's been watching, this is our fourth or fifth interview on the fentanyl crisis and uh, drugs that we've done. Maybe somebody's listening, but that's the first time I heard it today. And that's the thing, if we don't go to the meetings and we don't go to the news media or the talk shows like you or the newspaper like yours, then we're not, we're not telling the, the media, the politicians of what direction we as citizens want to see our state and our children to be in. And when, when you give nobody guidance, you have chaos. Now that you're putting accountability to our politicians, you're actually creating a structured environment that I believe all people need to start following, especially on this drug addiction. Right. So it's almost like, you know, they make, were handed a bunch of money and said, here, handle this. And you found something on the Internet mm -hmm. that is going on right here in the state. Uh, tell us about what happened when you stumbled upon it. It really hurt me on many occasions what I found. One is we get $20 million for the next 30 years from the, the, the settlement for opioids. To me, the victims should at least get a burial. And if you figure it out, I think Vito had figured it out, it comes to be about a million dollars if we bury the 35 people that they, uh, uh, what's it, no, 435 people that they expect to die every year. That's one million. That means you've got 19 more million to, to figure out. I think we, could, we, we, we owe it to the victims to at least give them a decent burial. However, instead of that, you can actually request from URI, which will mail you out this package. And I know you can't really see it, but it comes from uh, the University of Rhode Island over on uh, 45 Lower College Road in Kingston, Rhode Island. And one of the things that it, it does... You actually, they hand these cards up, uh, preventoverdoseri.com, I think. It's either .com or .org. But it's by the, the governor's office, and you can get these packets. Now, I'm thinking that this packet's going to help promote, to educate people how not to do drugs. Maybe to give them, you know, an AA meeting or something like that some kind of good directions. Instead, the first card I pulled out basically says, no judgment, which I'm okay with, no shaming, which I'm okay with, but no preaching, which in a sense I get. But you need to explain the dangers of, of fentanyl and the people's choices, what they can do and what will happen if they don't do it. Right. And their life depends on it. Why wouldn't we talk to them about it? Why wouldn't right. we? Why don't we want to try to save someone's lives? And that really threw me off. Then I come to the second card, and it says right on the top of this card, and again, this is from Prevent Overdose RI, which is the governor's opioid overdose crisis, and the URIs mailing it out by students packing this up and sending it to the residents. No matter what age you are, you can be 13 years old or 18 years old, or 82 years old. And it says, how to, do, how to use drugs safely. Now, what if you got some type of ailment, some type of mental abnormality? Maybe you got Down syndrome. Maybe you got a little autism. Maybe you just have full trust in your government, and you've got the government sending you how to do drugs safely. This can be extremely dangerous and deadly. As though there were actually a way to do drugs safely. Right, and there's no way to do drugs safely. Right. Alcohol is, is legal, and even that's dangerous. Absolutely. We're going to talk about this new fentanyl crisis. Now, I was at this meeting a little while back on the opioid crisis, and the doctor on the board, I forgot his name, um, said that uh, the numbers were going down. I said, did you ever think that they're running out of product? 
and he, he says, no, they're, they're, our works are, are, are actually helping Rhode Islanders. And th these things are, are not being publicized by networks like you, Channel 10, Channel 12, Channel 6. This is what's on a billboard in the ghetto. This is what's in front of Kennedy Plaza where every student goes out in front. So when you sit there and say, my kid doesn't know anything about your kid's seeing this more than you are because he's going where all these buses are dropping them off or in the bus itself also as he's posted inside the bus and I've seen them. Not to mention they also send you a thing, a Narcan. They, they so do. if you if you do uh, uh, take too much or... You, get, you think you, you're safe. Yeah, it gives you that. I, I believe of, you know, a false sense of security because I, I really... You know, I used to think it was naive back in the day when, you know, Nancy Reagan said, just say no. But I really do think that that is the only answer. And, and helping people to get off drugs and stay off drugs and then learn to live life on life terms a day at a time is really the only real solution. Um, but giving them some false idea that you can do drugs safely and, you know, here's Narcan in case it goes sideways. Um, uh, is is already insane, but then this package gets even more insane. What else was in this package, my friend? So then, they give you fentanyl test strips, which again, if you're a drug addict and, and you or you're off the street and a drug addict, you're not going to use your last twenty dollars to test this, whatever your product is. But if you do test it, you have to test the whole product, which makes the whole product nothing. So if I had cocaine, I pour it all in. I test it, and it either shows positive or negative. But then I have to throw it away because it's not even good for, for cocaine. It took away all the, all the theory of what you were buying the drug for. Right. So most people aren't going to try it. If you only try a little, the fentanyl could be on the other side. It's called the, the cookie, uh, chocolate chip cookie theory. And basically, if you cut one half, you might get a little bit. You might not. But the other half might have the same amount of fentanyl on it so this basically is just is throwing money away this this package right here no nobody who's going out and spent their hard-earned dollar on drugs um is going to use this kit on their drugs to test it it's not going to happen my personal belief is what you said earlier and i don't think you realize what you said or or or, or meant what you meant what i'm about to say is this in not can is basically once they allowed the medical coverage to cover the, the, the addiction crisis that we have, they changed it over to the big pharma. So big pharma is making millions and billions of dollars off of these test scripts right. that most people are throwing these, this pot yeah, away. Yeah, that's going in the garbage. The fentanyl that we're using is constantly changed. But say if you're using it and, and the knock can, can be used, what I've been hearing off of my friends and friends family of of children that either died or, or came close to death it's a using two and three of the knock cans oh. so if you don't have multiple knock cans you're you're almost good to die so as they're mailing only one knock can and you're thinking you're safe if you don't have that second knock can the the dose is too high for for one of those those sprays and then there's the work. second part of knock can where if you get narcan or you narcan somebody, you're supposed to go to the hospital and get looked at. Right, because it only brings you back. It doesn't solve the problem. Right. You still need medical attention because all that, all that fentanyl that's in your system is just on a delayed reaction. There are people that have, have come back and died the next day, and that was only because they thought they were fine with one shot of narcan, they'll be okay. Right. But that's not true. And, and that's where... Education and true medical attention needs to be pushed. That our government isn't pushing. They're basically saying, here's a knock in, you're good to go, have a good day. Even if they throw on the last line, go see a doctor. It's it's so damn small, you didn't read the fine. So now there's more wasted money. Now, I, I, I had heard, a, not the devil's advocate, but an advocate saying, you know, Narcan is probably, I'm not doubting Narcan. Yes, it's something we should probably all have in our medicine cabinets in case you have an accidental overdose or take a pill and you have a bad reaction to it you know everybody should have it in their medicine cabinet uh and then if they need to use it then they should go to the hospital but it's not something we should be handing out to drug addicts or people who have a drug addiction problem 
or and sometimes what I say is people are basically abusing themselves with drugs. You know, this is not something that we should just be handing out to people in, as, as it's, a, it's a full sense of safety. So maybe the numbers of overdose are going down, but what we're doing is we're just pushing them back a little bit because you narcan yourself a couple times and now you're doing more drug and you think you have this false sense of safety. So you don't die on Monday, you died two months from now or three months from now because you're still an active, you're still actively using, you know, illicit drugs and um, it's a dangerous thing. Well, a couple of days ago, NPR had released that fentanyl ingredients last year were extremely drying out. And that's why the numbers were drying. Uh -huh. It wasn't that the addicts weren't using, it wasn't like the drug addicts weren't, uh, drug dealers weren't given. It was that the, the potency of the fentanyl wasn't able to be produced. Now, I believe that problem has been cured which, if you looked at some of the spikes in Rhode Island, there were quite a bit this year, which I'm thinking that that number is going to supersede itself mm -hmm. next year. Now, I said that at that meeting last time I was there, and they thought I was, I was kidding. Four weeks later, uh, NPR came out with that release. Mm -hmm. So I guess I wasn't kidding that much. It's actually a thing that sometimes when, when your pharmacy is running out of medicine, so is the rest of the world. It's, it's one of those things. But we need to, to start really focusing on this before we have large numbers again. And we should actually be at, at a number that I'd be comfortable with, and that's zero. Exactly. Um, unfortunately, we, we have some problems. So, so now we just, first we have wasted money, but now we've got something that's even more insane. What are we doing here? So now they gave us, in this package that was mailed from your eye, packaged by a URI student funded by the University of Rhode Island, which was paid by all the parents that paid the tuition of their children. They give us a plastic razor blade, which is good because I can't cut myself, so that's safe. But they also give you cocaine straws, three of them. Well, and how to, how to um, be safe using cocaine. Bunch of tips in it. Which is an illegal, illicit substance that nobody should be using. And we should never be promoting the, drugs at any level. Not even how, how to... So how we're, to going, we're going way beyond. We're becoming, wasting money, but now we're actually going to... We're going to encourage our kids to do drugs. We are becoming... The salespeople and the marketing planners of our drug dealers. And to me, I don't think we should do that. I mean, it's bad enough we got, we got drug dealers in every children's pocket through our Apple phones and our, our, our smartphones. Now we're going to sit there and mail them the, 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 the components to, to either smoke or, or snort the stuff. Because the other thing is, is it, there's two ways to get this. They also give you a crack pipe with a little SOS pad you're supposed to put it in. Then you put the rock in and then you're supposed to smoke it because the glass will get hot. They give you a rubber thing so you don't burn your fingers. That is insane. They give you either so, the straight way or they give you a bubble one, which is a little more designer. Now, so this is insane, people. So I, I'm not bringing you this because, you know, I, I want to encourage anybody to go get this. What I want to encourage people to do is call URI, call the state, call this organization and, and tell them to stop, cease and desist. And call the governor's office. This is, this is what they're handing out to people who fill out all this information and they send out these packages. This is absolutely insane. This is encouraging uh, drug use. That's, you know, this is insane. hundred percent. And, and I got two children that are in their 20s. And my kids, just like a lot of other kids in Rhode Island, aren't saints. They all think they know it better than us adults. And, and I'm afraid that they're going to eventually try something, peer pressure, do something. And if we don't stand up and, and, and go against everybody, we're going to let them kill our children. And I can't sit back. No matter how much pain I'm in, no matter how much, how much I'm personally hurting, I think it's my obligation as a parent. Forget about a citizen around, a parent. To stand up and say, Governor, stop what you're doing with this this opioid board and this this drug overdose, uh, what's that, prevent 
I even forgot it. What is this thing? Prevent overdose. All right. When you sit there and you can say that there's a there's drugs that you can do safer, you lost me at hello. Right. Right. Whereas, I mean, uh, maybe a pamphlet that listed all of the rehabs in the state and perhaps a, a list of AA meetings and NA meetings. I think for the amount of money they're probably spending on all this stuff, you could probably throw in uh, any book or an AA book, uh, which would at least give some people information on how to possibly stop, uh, you know, doing drugs a day at a time. And uh, but this right here is is uh, is they're just taking this money and they're just setting it on fire and they're setting our kids on fire with it. It's uh, uh, Vito's doing an awareness program, which I believe this, the state of Rhode Island should help fund and promote the dangers of, of, of fentanyl. But DEA also has a program that is able to give to every public school to teach them the dangers and actually go through that no, there's no drug safe, that everyone is deadly. Right. But put all that aside, go back years ago when, when before the medical coverage covered basically addiction the money covering halfway houses the money covering AA meetings didn't exist it was either funded by right normal people that are living next door or family members or you didn't have it so what we should do is instead of spending garbage like this we should start funding more of the AA programs or the halfway houses and actually teach people how to clean themselves up and give more of awareness to our children. Like you said, years ago, we used to color and have fun with, with this, you know, um, just say no drugs as children making new posters up. We should have a contest of that. Right. We should bring kids to be involved in, in just say no and, and to have pamp uh, stand up to peer pressure. We don't have any of that. Yeah, we need to bring we need to bring that back and. Um you know, even though I know uh, AA and NA, those kind of anonymous meetings don't really like to get involved with government, but there's nothing stopping the government from buying the books. Um, you can go to the uh, Amazon and you can buy book, the yeah, book, but the, government, the literature. The government buy, uh, funds the hospital. Right. But HIPAA protects them. So if, if you're actually looking at AA and NA as an organization to sit there and say, well, we're going to protect your, your clientele. But we're going to fund the books, or we're going to fund the place that you're having and that. Right. They could still get grants that way. Absolutely. What's and a, that's what they should fund. So I'm saying if they're looking for to spend their grants on something, because it, they would be better off spending their grants on literature that helps people stop doing drugs, as opposed to this, which seems to be promoting drugs. Hundred percent promoting, and, and 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 all this all this stuff that you've. A, a, a or NA it's about the government can be worked out in the long run right as as we work it but like you said if we're sending our children spending a hundred thousand or more for their tuition to spend at your right and they're going to go on this off time to put crack pipes in, in the packages to give to our children or our next door neighbors it's right. not helping Rhode Island right. we're spending a lot of money on their education to what destroy Rhode Island it shouldn't be Right. No, it shouldn't be. We should be working harder to uh, educate kids on not doing drugs. You know, it's a you know, it's a whole other, uh, you know, we try to tell them to not have sex. But sex is something that's, you know, organic and, and natural and normal. Uh, but we tell them here, do drugs, but do them safely, which is, you know, plus we have the second. I mean, it wasn't like this when, you know, we were younger. There was no fentanyl. Uh, now, you know, from what I understand, you can't even get, you know, unless you get your marijuana from a distillery, you know, that is le licensed to sell it, you may get fentanyl. It laced in with your, and the next thing you know, you're a fentanyl addict. And or now, you're dead. Or you're dead. Because it doesn't, it can sometimes one time can kill you. Now, you said something. So, children have to be 18, uh, you have to be 18 to get a playboy now or always. However, I went to the Rhode Island State Police and I showed them this packet, showed them who it came from. Before I showed them who it came from, they were very interested because it's against the state law, both for an adult or a child to get drug paraphernalia 
that has crack pipes and cocaine straws in it and how to use them and how to cut it and how to do everything that you need to do to pack it, to smoke it, whatever you are doing, it's illegal to sell that or hand it out for free. Mm -hmm. So when I handed them the packet, they were very interested. Once they figured out it was you or I, it was like I turned the light switch off and they said, we can't do anything. It's the state of Rhode Island. The federal government and the state of Rhode Island have merrill laws when it comes to drug paraphernalia. The only thing, and this is what some of them are going to use, the only thing that was erased was the one regarding marijuana. Right. Nothing about crack pipes, nothing about cocaine, nothing about fentanyl was on that bill. The bill that covered the fentanyl, the crack, the coke, the methamphetamine are still in place today and still is illegal and actually more illegal if you're under 18. Now, I got this package saying I was 14 years old. That means they're breaking a severe crime, both federally and state, and the state police will not enact because it's the URI campus, right. which is run by the state of Rhode Island. Right. To me, I thought, especially a lot of the movies in my past, no one's above the law. Well, it, I mean, if, your, the, your eye. if the state is doing it and, and this is what, what they're thinking is right. But so here is, you know, here is my suggestion. You know, we don't have to take this. You know, you all know the governor's. Uh, you could go to his website and send him a note or you can call him and uh, you can tell him to stop. Killing our kids. Stop, stop helping our kids kill themselves. I mean, I'm not going to accuse him or anybody else. People pick up drugs and then they, they have a hard time putting them down. If you've picked up drugs and you have a hard time putting it down, there are organizations out there that can help you. You can get yourself into a rehab. You can um, go to a NA meeting or an AA meeting and you can get yourself some help. And you can learn how to not do drugs and live life on life's terms a day at a time. But we need to, but if you're, if you're a citizen, if you're a, you know, a, a parent out there, I'm asking you to call the governor's office and tell them to put an end to this. This is not helpful. This is not going to, this is not going to keep kids off drugs. I agree. And, and your newspaper actually has a lot of those programs that don't cost anything but a telephone call. Yep. And, they're listed on the community pages. And, and therefore there's those those listings are more important and life-saving than anything that I've seen the, the Rhode Island Overdose uh, Board do lately. I hear that they're changing things the last 30 days. Haven't really seen it myself. But again, it shouldn't be a little. It should be and all I did, I did hear just today, just today, first time ever, I heard a commercial warning the citizens of Rhode Island that the drug, the illicit drugs uh, were tainted. Um, and tainted with fentanyl. That's the first time I've heard but anything like that. fentanyl's been around since 1994. Right. right. It died out in about 2007 because of the, the three people that were making it in the United States got arrested and then started coming back in 2015 and been killing lots of people every year. And it's highly addictive. I mean, that little dose, the same dose that can kill you can also get you addicted. 3% as of right now, and it could be because of the programs that are out there now aren't being promoted as much, but they have 3% of recovery once you got hooked onto fentanyl. I'm hoping it's because we don't have enough AAs and NEs being promoted. But again, I don't know because I don't see that side of the world being promoted. We need to promote that side and try to reduce these numbers right. and hope that it's not really because of the drug and maybe it's just because of our society. Because 3%, we have no shot in hell. Nope. Well, Michael, you know, uh, I'll have you back in again. Thank you so much for bringing this to our attention, to our audience's attention. And, um, you know, thank you so much. Thank you.